So hello viewers, welcome to the second part of the SRAM video series. In the previous part, we are trying to figure out the memory operations in our computers and knew the basic operations of SRAM and DRAM. Today I will discuss the working principle of the SRAM memory cell. This is the very important topic of this SRAM video series. So I want to request you to pay attention on this video lecture. So let's start. So let's say we want to understand the read operation first. So we assume that in this memory cell we already stored something here, the queue. Okay? So before going to read, there are a couple of synchronous operations we have to maintain. So first, before read, we have to make bit and this bit bar line high, or you can say the bit lines are both initially floating high then uh, we assume q is 0 and the q bar is 1 now word is high so what will happen let me draw this for you so q is 0 q bar is 1 bit and bit bar both 1 and initially word is 0 so when the warden is initially zero, those access transistors are remains off. So there is no connection between this Q node and the bit. Also same goes for the Q bar and the bit bar. So when the warden raised, okay, these access transistors are on now, right? So a path will be created from bit to q also the bit bar to the q bar now tell me what keeps the q remain zero stable so obviously the one from this q bar is keep on this d on transistor on and the p on transistor off so from this output to the ground the q remains zero now let's come to the bit bit will go down also the same time and the node q tends to rise in the voltage so how how this will happen because you can see here is a higher potential and the q is in lower potential okay so the current will flow from the higher potential to the lower potential right and thus the bit will go down okay and q is to tends to rise in voltage so now at the same time you can see the d on transistor is also on and connected q to the ground right so if Q keeps increasing, D1 is also trying to pull nodes Q towards to zero. You can see there is a fighting between the D1 transistor and the A1 transistor. Right? So what do you think? Who should win? So let me ask you something. When you read something from your memory, do you want to change the state during the reading? Obviously no, so we have to help D1 to win, right? So that it will keep the Q zero, right? So yes, we can do that. That's called the read stability criteria and we will further discuss the topic in the next videos. And on the other hand side, here the Q bar and bit bar, as there is no voltage difference, so no current will flow from the bit bar to q bar or the q bar to the bit bar and the bit bar and q bar will remain high so we can say that when the word line is raised the bit is being pulled down and node q tends to rise and q is held low by this d1 but raised by the current flowing from the a1 the driver d1 must be stronger 
than the excess transistor A1. Specifically, the transistors must be ratioed such that node Q remains below the switching threshold voltage of the P2D2 inverter. Otherwise, it will flip the Q bar to zero. So this constant is called the read stability. Okay. You can see the waveform here. The waveform for the read operation are shown here. So zero is read onto the bit. You can see. Observe that Q is momentarily rises but does not glitch badly enough to flip the cell actually. If you connect a probe to the bit line and if you observe that your bit line is become zero volt then you can say you successfully read zero on the queue. Assume that previously Q was written to one and if you notice there is no voltage difference on your B line in your probe then you can say you successfully read the one okay now let's go for the right operation so again uh, assume that Q is initially zero and that we wish to write a one onto the cell so for the right operation we have to also follow some sequential operations right so initially for the right operation we have to keep bit high and the bit bar is low and the word is also low before the right operation okay so now the word is become high what will happen okay let's draw so q is zero q bar is one the bit is one here and we will keep bit bar zero and the word is now one okay so what will happen after word line raised this a1 and a2 transistor will be on so now here the q is zero and the bit is one we want to make this q to one so that's what we want to write but how can we do this okay you may think that this time i want to let a1 win and this will flip the q from zero to one but you can do that because you will design your hardware just once you can change its property like the sizes once the hardware has been already made so what is the other way if we can change the input value of this first inverter from 1 to 0 then we can get 1 at node Q because for input 0 the D1 will turn off and the P1 will turn on and keeps Q node 1 constantly using the source VDD. So that's why we made bit bar 0 because we can see after turn on the A2 transistor a potential difference has been created and the current will flow from the Q bit bar to A2 right but here we'll face the same fact from the reader portion. This P2 will try to keep Q bar 1 and A2 will help to make Q bar to 0. So again, who should win here? Yes, you are right. A2 should win. That's called the right stability criteria and we will discuss further this topic in the next couple of videos. So when this Q bar becomes zero, it will make this Q1 
and thus it fulfills our right of person. I hope now you understand the both lead and right of persons. Okay, so here you can see when the word line raised high, the bid bar is getting low and the queue is rising after some time. These pictures are taken from the CMOS VLSI design book written by the Neil H. West and the David Manny Harris. Okay, so that's it for today. Hope you get an idea how the SRAM works. In the next video, I will discuss the read and write stability of SRAM. This topic is very important as it defines will your SRAM work properly or not. So please stay tuned, share this knowledge with your friends and if you have any confusion, please don't hesitate. Please let me know in the comment section. Till then, take care and bye bye.